Hey, what's going on, Archons? Welcome to the analysis series where I look at something and go into my thoughts on it. So what I have here is, uh, as you can see, a game set up, but this is differently set up than before. I will be choosing um, new decks and looking at aspects within the deck in terms of the form of a mulligan. That's right. I'm going to piggyback off of the discussion that happened in Help From Future Self this week and um, use my analysis to give a visual cue of scenarios in which case you may keep or not keep hands and the reasons why I would do it. So I'm going to be going strictly on my deck and not having influence of my opponent's deck, but I will discuss scenarios where I think certain things that could exist within my opponent's deck could influence me to keep or throw back a hand. So first off here, we're going to go into this Worlds Collide deck, uh, Zen God Tier Amphitheater Distiller. Great name. And um, just kind of talk about a few things that exist in this deck. So uh, when I look at this this list, the things that really stand out to me is Exhume with Triple Not Finish with you. A uh, reason being it means that anything that can get killed early has a chance to be easily brought out again or recycled back into the deck. So there's things that need to be taken in consideration when doing a mulligan. So for example, what I mean is if there's like a late game creature, you have a perfect example here is Tribune Pompidus is a game that is a creature that can really do something impactful when it's out and you may want to have it later than sooner. Uh, Senator Shrix would be another one, Raider Gallum, all these things that can be used via um, a not finished with you cycling it back in or an exhume. So those are things that I keep in mind when I'll make these decisions with this deck. Um, next up, the things that you want to know, think about is, okay, obviously Tribute, you don't want that early. Lateral Shift, I mean, that's a turn one card in a way, but probably like a turn two, to be honest. Uh, Golden Spiral, Coliseum, just running down through things here. Uh, again, Tribune Pompidus. And then we go into Shadows. There's a Too Much to Protect. Hit and Run with a Ronnie obviously is good um there's also a hawk so hawks are important because if you're going against a signature artifact deck that's what i'm going to call those signature artifact decks meaning quixel stones heart of the forest dav um i know there's some i'm missing but you you get the point things that when they hit the board they're going to have a, a strong influence on your opponent's side of the game and your ability to maybe do what you want to do so these are things that need to be considered. Uh, do I search for those early? Do I make sure I have it so it's not something I have to worry about later? Especially the Hawk. Uh, I If I feel that the artifact is strong enough to actually hinder me, I would be in a position to consider potentially being like, you know what? I am going to actually keep this so that I'm in a position where if it comes out, I have a contingency plan. And I will chain myself to do so because of the level that the artifact can impact your game. It must be considered. And that is to say, you may not say yes to keeping it, but you must make a consideration for the fact that that exists and that you have it. You have the answer. If the question's posed, you have the answer. A teacher goes, do you know what this is? And you can go, yes, I do. And then you play your hawk and they go, oh, yes, you did know the answer. Perfect, right? That's what we want in life. Know the answers. And if you don't, ask the questions. So with that being said, what will we do with this hand? This is a perfect starting hand, actually. I literally loaded this up just on a whim to see what would happen. And it actually came out where I don't have an opponent. But this is like so perfect for what I wanted to showcase here. So this is the fabled 222, but you're going first. So you actually have a 3-2-2. Two, two. But technically, if depending on how you lean, you still have a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And it has a couple things that warrant maybe considering pitching it back. First off, the fact that it's a 3-2-2. Two, two. Uh, second, you have Exhume and a Not Finished With You. The Not Finished With You is not so much of a uh-oh, but the Exhume, you may not want this early. That's one thing. Now... That is just looking at the disc side of things. We're going to go each one one by one. Then we go over to Shadows, which has Hawk, meaning it is a crucial card that could be helpful if your opponent is posing 
that artifact conundrum. And then you have lethal distraction. Lethal distraction is irrelevant in this discussion. It is just a card. It's going to have no effect. It has Ember. It doesn't matter. Same with Malazon. Malazon, I don't care for right now. It's irrelevant. Tribune Pompidus. Now, this is a different card. This card warrants discussion. It's one of the factors that made me go, hmm, maybe I should actually keep this. Reason being is it's going to create your ability to have Ember on creatures and them become stronger and harder to deal with. Now, if your opponent has a lot of board wipes, you would then be considering this differently because now you're just creating Ember Pinatas to be popped. Going along with Tribune Pompidus is the fact that there's a Not Finished With You and an Exhum. So both of these are going to lay credence to if I play this early, something happens to it. I don't have to worry. I can get it back in the deck and determine that it is important within the scheme of how this deck works. Let's just say it's an important creature, okay? It kind of is, but also, you know. Um, and then, of course, we look at the other asset, Golden Spiral. Perfect. It actually helps Tribune Pompidus do what it does, get bigger, pose that threat. So with that being said, viewer, what would you do? Toss it or keep it? This is the question. So you're taking into the fact that you have some key components, some overloaded on one side, some contingencies on the other, and then something that works pretty good. What would you do? What would I do? I would keep this one. Reason being, turn one play is golden spiral. If my opponent wants to take that out right away, I'm okay with that. And then turn two follow up with a Tribune Pompidus, which will then also allow me to use Golden Spiral on Tribune Pompidus and be laughing. Uh, if it gets killed on the way, pivot into Dis and do some things. And if it uh, does not, then like I said, you can use the Tribune. Oh, I guess it wouldn't. Uh, sorry. You Golden Spiral into Tribune Pompidus. And then from there, you're in a position where your Tribune Pompidus exists. You're loving it. And then you have a full hand of a three and a two. So you can either lean into... Um, You'll have one more card, but then you'll, you can lean into doing what you want to do with the shadows or the disc side of things, depending on where the game takes you from there. But that's just the first decision, okay? All right. Leave this. Let's do another one. Um, I really hope no one comes into this game. I should just put a, a thing on this so that can't happen. Okay. Here we go. Here's another one. Example number two. <laughs> well, I mean, she's something like that. You're definitely going to be going for a keep. I mean, triple daughter is a, is a pretty much an auto keep. There's no reason why you wouldn't do this. Um, I hate this that this just came out this way. But triple daughter is an obvious keep. There's no analysis needed. That is an auto keep. So this deck has a lot of things. This is another triple not finished with you. I don't know why I randomly chose two of those. Um, but here we are. Uh, so... Yeah, you're obviously going to keep triple daughters, uh, especially when you have a not finished with you in hand. So you put them down. You just have answers to get them back in your deck and get that cycling going. Uh, let's say we did mulligan it. Let's say we're going second and this was the option. Okay, this is a better one. Because of the nature that I'm only one player in, I'm always going to be the first. So I may mulligan the hand and pretend we're the second player now. And what would we do? So this for me is uh, has some interesting considerations. I'll tell you what. I love the fact that it's a 3-3. That alone makes it feel auto-keep. Now, here's what doesn't. The fact that Ronnie, Jay Vinda, and Breaker Hill are all doing some sort of Ember control, and it's so early in the game, you know you're not going to be getting value of it out of it. The only saving grace of these three is the fact that you have a not finished with you, so you can allow some of this stuff to just take hold and do its thing. Jay Vinda can put in work across here, but it's a lot of Ember control, that's out really early. Now, because this deck has three not finished with yous, I mean, that that is a consideration that must be taken into account. And then we look at the disc side of things, which is a rock grub, which will be a dead card. You have festering touch, and then you have not finished with you. So there's a couple things I think can be done here. The rock grub going second, you mean your opponent could have gained an ember off their first card they played. I mean, through various things, Eureka would be for sure something that would generate a bunch of ember. Flaxia just playing an action card or something that involves an ember on it. That is a possibility. Not always a creature will be played. Um, so if you put the rot grub out, you'll get that value. 
you get three cards and then you have the shadows you can hold on to. For me personally, I think I would toss this one back. <clears throat> the main reason being is um, this is a Logos deck. It has Igor, it has Triple Daughter, and it has a Titan Guardian. Any of those Logos creatures, except for maybe like Dr. Millie or Code Monkey, because I think they'll have more value later on, are something that I would kind of want earlier rather than later. So the fact that I have no Logos to start with, makes me not really want this one. So that's where I'd go with this. The fact that there is four cards that can contribute to Ember Control here makes this kind of more why I don't want it right now. So we're going to let this one slide. That being said, the Not Finished With You does make it need to be considered. Uh, and let's go on to a different one. Yeah, I'm just going to put a random password in these so that I can't have someone join in. All right, let's go to let's go to something a little different here. Let's go to a Coda Rush deck because this this is I think this the archetype of the deck does change the equation. All right, so going first, I actually love this hand for a turn one. So many reasons why I love this one. This to me is a perfect turn one hand. I would actually play Champion Anaphil as my first card because it provides the taunt. Uh, this card thrives off of, or this deck thrives off of having a untamed played later on. So you get to utilize it uh, for its maximum effect. Now, the good thing is that exists here is that I think the, um, I would do this different. I would play Champion Anaphil turn one. If it survives, I would Hunting Witch, Witch of the Eye on either side as a means of protection. So they have to get through Anaphil first. You have the Witch of the Eye alone causing extreme issues. And then the Hunting Witch set up for this turn over here of Brobnar stuff. And hopefully maybe another Brobnar card comes into hand in between those turns. That would be real something special. But yes, I would definitely keep this hand. I mean, even if I chose not to go the Anaphil, like let's say maybe I go the route where I start going into my Brobnar stuff. That's also a thing to consider. But I really think I go Anaphil turn one and then go this way and just use that protection to my advantage. Now let's say we're going second. This is the hand that you get. Oh, a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So um, I would send this one back. This one I don't actually have to think about. Choda is really important in this deck. It is a key component of how it wants to win. And even with the regrowth in Nature's Call, getting that this early is really counterproductive to what I want to do with this deck. Um, the fact that the Ganger is also here without a target to really use, unless I use Nifle for something, and the War Song I want to use. So I want to get that burst through fighting, and I'm not going to get that with such a limited supply here. Uh, it's really the Sanctum... Uh, the 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 uh, this is not the worst the brobs but the other things i really don't want so so this would be a throwback for that reason it's just not looking what i want it's 222 two, two, plus there're things that i don't want to have the composition of the 222 two, two is not lending uh, me to want to go this way all right we're going to do one more And this one we're going to do with a uh, let's do with this one. I haven't done a what's it called? Well, what am I call it? Why can't I remember the set name? Mass mutation. That's the one. Okay, so this one has a few things to be considered. Uh, it's got good mutants. Maverick Fandangle obviously is amazing. And it's got a Vault's Blessing, so you want to try and set that up the best way you can. Um, so right now, what are we looking at? This is, again, a 3-2-2. Two, two. Um, oh, no, it's not. What am I talking about? This is a, this is a pretty keepable hand, uh, aside from the Ghost Talk. The Malificorn with all this. I mean, there is so many ways you can consider this. Um Going first, this is actually not the greatest. I, I mean, just the fact that you can cycle four cards, though, 
would lend me to keep this. This is really good. You're getting three Ember, cycling four cards. Turn one, if you play the Maleficorn and then go Whale, Gleeful Mayhem, or even... It's it's a hard... I think you actually take an L turn one to set this up for turn two. That's what I would actually suggest. Take the L turn one to set up turn two. So that could mean either uh, just dropping the Gleeful Mayhem right off the top and then going Whale the Dam, Maleficorn... Um, no, what am I talking about here? You drop Maleficorn turn one, so you can ghost talk and do all this other stuff. I don't know why I said that that way. Um, my brain is not functioning here. Let me drink some coffee and make myself more intelligent for this situation. Big yikes. I don't know what I was thinking there. First of all, I saw this as a two, two, two hand. So yeah, something's wrong. Um, but yeah, this is an auto keep just for what you can do with the untamed. Uh, yeah, it's Maleficorn into Ghost Talk, Niffle Ape, Double Gross Search. That's all it is. That, that's how you roll with that, and you have a good time. Uh, let's say we're going second here. Oh, and here is a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. That's quite interesting. Um, there's a few things I like about this one. Uh, aside from the fact that it's a 2-2-2, two, 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 I wouldn't necessarily throw this one back right away. And I'll tell you why. There is a few things that exist here that I really like in terms of the way it's going to set up things to come. So with this deck, I love the fact that a Cinder could come down and a Mind Fire because that just sets me up with a Taunt Protection, which I'm a big fan of. On top of that, you have the Sacrosaurus with the ability to hit something for three, which is helpful. And you have Theros Centurion, which has got the, you know, the play fight capture ability. So you got some Ember Control. But what really makes me want to not toss us back is the Cinder into Pismire with a Gross Surge. The ability to make both Cinder and Pismire a lot beefier and harder to deal with means that you're going to put a threat that needs to be answered. You're going to be asking those questions we talked about. So I really like it for that reason. Um, that's going to wrap up this one. And uh, so, yeah, this is basically how I do this, is I'm going to hold off on the dinos, go dis, go untamed, and hopefully in between those two, we're going to set up a really nice dino or lean into one of the other things that occurred. Um, like I said, this was a, a new new way of doing this. I want to really go over some mulligans. So if you listen to the Hell from Future Self episode, you can kind of get an idea maybe of the way I think about certain things and have this visual aspect to it. Uh, let me know what you thought about this this one. Uh, these ones are a little bit longer episodes, but there's there's more to go into them. And uh, yeah, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, may your ember never be stolen and your keys forged promptly. Have a good one.